Okay, welcome. Welcome, Mark Jones, to the March 16th, 2016 uh, Neshoba Regional School Committee regular meeting. Call to order at 6 o'clock. Um, the first item on the agenda is citizens' comments. How many are here for citizens' comments? One. Sir. Um, so before citizens comments, okay, <laughs> you'll let me go through this. Um, we need to keep your comments to three minutes. Um, no comments about any individual. Um, we will hear what you have to say, and I have a feeling that your subject matter will be covered later on in the evening that will give you some additional input. But please introduce yourselves and... We'd love to hear what you'd like to share with us. Yes, good evening. John Hawks, I'm Selectman in Stowe, but in this capacity I'm here as a member of the task force, uh, which we're going to be hearing from tonight. You have in your packets my earlier letter respectfully asking you not to file an SOI in 2016. These comments briefly explain why I reached that conclusion. Please note that my dis dissenting vote on the now final report was based only on the proposed immediacy of SOI filing, not on the substance of that report. As a member of the Stowe Board of Selectmen, I served, served as an active member of the task force for approximately 18 months. In that capacity, I now convey my personal opinions, not necessarily those of my fellow selectmen. At the outset, I stress that I greatly appreciate the extensive diligence of task force members over the past two years, and my particular gratitude is expressed to Chairman Bob Szanski for his hundreds of hours to invested to date. Factors supporting my recommendation not to rush an SOI submission include the following. The district will soon have a new superintendent. It would be beneficial to both her slash him and the committee to have that profession, person's professional advice and participation prior to making a major decision with its future implications. Two, the information in the 10-year enrollment forecast expected to be completed in April once evaluated by the school committee, may further inform its preferred course and timing of action of filing an SOI. Three, speaking only for Stowe, I'm concerned that any premature involvement with MSBA without the chance to first vet the task force's final version could jeopardize ultimate public support. This is especially so in my town, as it would come on the heels of taxpayer sticker shock for the new Palm Pacific bond, as well as continuing bond obligations for the Hale School, Center School, previous high school renovations, the high school athletic field, and the anticipated Minuteman High School reconstruction. The task force report will likely lead to an in-depth committee deliberation about preferred choices and the logical timelines indicated by those choices. Such a systematic approach will take time. The committee has of late a greatly improved climate of communication and cooperation with local officials in the district which I hope will not be damaged in the name of efficiency, if expediency, excuse me. After committee consideration of all of the above factors, informed by guidance from the town's three boards of selectmen, finance committee, and capital planning committees, and the public, might it even be possible, uh, might it even make sense to ask the taxpayers to consider a high school modernization project which might result in lower net costs to the district towns still meeting high educational standards without MSBA and sh cost sharing? Additional committee deliberations over the next few months may reveal helpful answers to this and other questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hawks. You appreciate that. Um, I don't know if you're planning on staying, but we will be having further discussion about that after a presentation. You didn't hear a word I just said, but <laughs> I said it anyway. Okay, thank you so much. It doesn't look like our student rep is here. All right, before we jump into... Um, we did have some... Up. Can I give a little bit of a student update for something that we got? I mean, it has to do with the high school, and it was some, it, some great stuff. <laughs> sure. So... Any excuse. Yes. That's right. So, um, I received an email, and I'm sure a lot of people did, um, about um, DECA. And oh, they're, yeah. they're, yeah, and they no, just, just, they just came call. back from uh, the uh, DECA presentations in Boston. 
and um, I think there were 80 some odd. I, oh, am I stealing? Yeah, you know what? Go right, right ahead. No. I am so, no, go right ahead. We're all going to have to just wait. So why don't we stop and let, let's get this meeting back on track. Okay. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'd love for you guys to wait and let's keep the spring um, excitement for spring to a minimum so we can get through this efficiently. Remember, this is a business meeting. Um, there are, and we'll look to you to share some of that wonderful news it's later. In, it's in oh, wonderful. Okay. Um, housekeeping items. Lynn and Neil, come on. Housekeeping items. Um, did you all receive the email that I sent you with regards to Representative Hogan's request to meet with us? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you did, um, is there any one date that doesn't work for you? I'd like to pick a day so that we can get it on the calendar. April 8th, between 9 and 3. April 21st, between 8.30 and 3. And April 22nd, between 8.30 and 3. Well, if I can speak first, yes. I can do any of those days, but 9 o'clock would be the earliest. Okay. I'd like to suggest we do April 8th, unless someone has a major issue with it. That's a Friday, Friday, April 8th mm -hmm. at noon, and maybe we could actually offer lunch. I am tentative on that. Okay. I haven't traveled that day in the mushroom. Sure okay, well, okay. Um, so we here? We would be meeting here. Okay. No, that, no, how long do you think it'll be? Because I'm only going to talk to you. It's not going to be that long. Okay. Right. That's fine. Kathy, you good on that? I can, yep. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Alita, can you get up, see if we can, uh, or Dr. Bates, if you need to get back to them on so we should April 8th at noon. Thank you. <laughs> it's spring. Okay. Has there ever been a tradition of seeing senators as well, state senators? She reached out to us because there was a legislative breakfast and she wasn't able to make it. So um, when we go to Day on the Hill, we do have an opportunity to meet with our legislators and you'll see at that point. And that would be something that um, Dr. Bates and Alita would help us set up or in the past have, have done that for us. Okay, so we'll get a, an sure. agenda together for that day. But that's a good question. Thank you. Okay, um, the only other housekeeping item I have, and then I'm not going to get into it because I'll let Neil do an update. Uh, and I want to make sure everybody hears this. Uh, the screening committee met last night for the new superintendent. I'm not part of the screening committee, but I did speak with our Mass Association of School Committees rep who shared that we received 22 applicants. She said it was a strong pool of candidates, and the group is a larger number than other recent searches they've done. So I just think that's a wonderful testament to the teachers and the administrators and the parents and the students of the district, and um, we'll let Neil give us an update um, when we get to that point in the agenda. Okay. All right, so we have visitors here uh, unified track presentation from the high school we have a thespian here too he's a thespian <laughs> go ahead I'm gonna let Nick talk first just because he's way more so tell us your I. name <laughs> so my name is Nick Givnajo. Um so why are we here we here to talk about um, unified track okay who am I <laughs> and this is my coach, who's on Miss Wendell. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Go ahead. So I've been in, in my YAC Moonsip conference about um, unified track and basketball. What's YAC? It's a Moonsip conference for kids with special needs, like me, who has like Down syndrome and disabilities. We've been able for the last two years to be able to take our captains to the youth to the youth <coughs> conference that Nick's actually been a part of being able to put on. 
So it's been really cool to be able to go as a school and support Nick and really see what he's been up to. It's been awesome to have him as a representative for our school as well because we get all the first-hand knowledge on everything that's going on. And we, ha we have been traveling to other schools to talk about special Olympics. So let me give you guys a uh, wrap up update of what Unified Track is. It actually started five years ago. We were on the pilot program of it for Massachusetts for Central Mass. Um, we've had a team for all five years. Uh, I have been the coaches my third year coaching. I worked on the. I worked to help out the team prior. It's Special Olympics and MIAA, so it's actually kind of a cool mix. We have the Special Olympics part of it, be able to really work on people's abilities instead of disabilities. Everyone is kind of able to score points for their team, which really makes it a great, great thing. Lucky at the high school, we have an awesome Best Buddies program that feeds right into our Unified Track program. We have one of the largest Unified Track teams in the state, and we are constantly <coughs> asked to be able to show people how our program is as great as it is. We were actually asked to um, host the league meet this year and last year, so that's a great testament to our actual team. Yep. Keep going, Nick. <laughs> and, um, I've been involved of team building for like six years and my event is the 4x4 four four relay and then the and the 100 meter dash and we do also have like have varsity jackets that we do when we get to the end to get it. One of the things that we were able to do with the help of um, Tiny Rich at the high school was to be able to make Unified a varsity sport at the high school. So everyone's able to get a varsity letter from being able to participate. I was able to make parameters that kids have to reach, so we're not just giving them to everybody. So and it also gives people like a real a way to go get what they what they actually want in it. We've in the last couple of years also done a lot of fundraising that we've been able to do as part of this team because our team's so big. It's been awesome to be able to really dive in and become a huge part of the high school athletic program. So we've actually participated in the Do It for Deuce relays that have gone on in the last couple of years. We were asked to do the um, mo to model what it looks like, and we've been able to do that the first last couple of years, which has been awesome. We did a Best Buddies walk last May. We were the largest school team to participate in it. We got a nice little trophy with a glitter shoe on the top of it <laughs> <laughs> that I had to beg Tony to put in the trophy closet. <laughs> It looks slightly ridiculous. <laughs> this year, we're actually uh, putting on a flag uh, football fundraiser where we're able to put the transitions classroom up against the life skills classroom under the lights <coughs> and have a big fundraiser where everyone's be able to participate in flag football. Uh, okay, got everything else. The other big thing is that I wanted to make sure that Unified was also recognized like a lot of our city sports. So we we got warm ups. We have like we have warm ups and all the other teams look at us like we're not so come off the bus because we look like all uniform and everything. Uh, but just even that the bus rides, the you know the uniforms, being able to really include everybody. And I have actually coached in the fall with one of the varsity um, track coaches, and he is not so happy because I have kids coming off the track team to the unified track instead, <laughs> which which is a great which again is a great testament to what we've been able to put together as a group. Uh, Nick and I went through a bunch of the pictures from the last couple of years, and we put together a poster board. And Nick would like to be able to show you guys a couple of the things and kind of tell you about them. So, um, so right here, this is me doing um, the shot put. Um, is where you get to the flow. Um, my hill is the middle. That's how we get the jackets. And my hill is where we take our team pictures. And this is our team picture again too. Um, Why do we have medals on in this one? Um, to get medals because you have. So um, if you do like any uh, events, and if you do events, and if you are qualified for the events, then you get these. What did we? What happened last year that we all have medals? What did we get? We all got. We got what place? First place. Wow. <laughs> Did we get first place last year or second? Second place. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> we did get first place in quite a few years. Last year we got second. <laughs> we'll get first again this year, don't worry. Yeah. And this one? Is That's from the relays, is right? For the relay, for the produce. The great part about the relays for all of our unified meets and everything is they actually are two partners and two athletes, so everything is completely unified. Even when they set up heats for 100s, anything. 
no one is looked at as someone with a, with a disability or without a disability. It's looked at like how fast can you run? So we have kids, like I have one of my students is faster than most of the general ed kids. He's just wicked fast. So he, he wouldn't notice and you wouldn't, he wouldn't have the opportunity because he really lacks the social skills to be able to participate in regular track. But because of this program, he's able to participate and get a varsity letter and run and do something that he loves. And that's like the best part about having this here. Do you want to go around and kind of show them the pictures? And this is to track. Okay. And that's the track. That's the track. Yeah. That's where we run. Nice track. Come show us the pictures. Hey, Nick, can we ask you a couple of questions? Yeah. Okay, does anyone have a question for Nick? I want to know if this is Nick. Who's <laughs> that with Nick? That's Nick. So with the Attorney General. Um, really? Yeah, so that is me because um <laughs> because um so so I got so I went down to Stonehill College uh -huh. to sing the national anthem. Yeah. So I got to sing the national anthem before the the thing before um and that's how like I received. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question, Nick. Yeah. Are you participating in the Adams Family Musical? Um, um, I'm, I'm actually I'm helping out with my parents. Oh, who, you are. Who my dad does the sets. So you decided to do the sets this year, work backstage. Yeah, and my mom does back. My mom also does the front of the house. Yep. My sister got the lead role. Wow. wow. As, um, <laughs> as the kicker, as Adam, as Morticia. No, she's Wednesday. She's Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday. All right, well, we got to come and see you all this weekend. So oh, good. Good. Nick was actually able, well, because we host the league meet, all of the pre meet um, stuff we are like, uh, we had uh, Gwen Burke sing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. Nick and um, Zach Murphy did the player's oath. Yeah. I had to do the coach's oath. So we had we are able to do all that part of it too. So that's actually a really nice thing about us being able to host it is that our kids get to be able to do all the participation for that stuff yeah. too. Wonderful. Neil. Uh, so is the track spring and fall or is it all year? When do we do it? Spring. Spring? spring. Yeah. Um, and I'm also was it start to vote for the the elections of the president too. That's right. Yeah. 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 So you've been to the primary? Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be in the parade with with the site here too. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Does anybody want to look at Nick's yeah. um, picture? Yeah. Bring yeah. a lot around Nick so we can take a peek. Have a good authority. He's a friend of Tom Brady's too. So treat him. Oh yeah, that's right. We know that. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. the Neshoba Regional High School Space Task Force. Okay, so before we get into discussions, I think everybody's probably remembers the presentation that Bob Skansky shared with us last week. There's um, an additional document in the packet. Um, late this afternoon, I had a chance to speak with the Director of Project Management at the Mass School Building Authority to ask her several questions. Um, one of the questions I asked her was, is it, is it more appropriate for us to start this now with an interim superintendent or should we be waiting for a permanent superintendent? And 
the response was, this isn't the superintendent, no offense, we love you, but <laughs> this isn't the superintendent's project, this is a your community's collective project. So she thought that as long as we felt that we had um, community support for it, that we could make that decision on our, on our own. Um, I then asked her if we um, decided to enter the SOI process now, and then decided through the year we weren't quite sure we were ready to do, to go forward, should we be selected, would we be able to withdraw and um, postpone for the following January, which would be January 2017, without repercussions from MSBA's <coughs> consideration? And um, she said that absolutely we would not be, um, we would not be, penalized. which was kind of surprising to me. We would not be penalized. Would not be penalized. <coughs> so with, without prejudice is the statement without that she prejudice. used. Good. Yep. Um, so let me think. There were a couple of other things. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. I made some notes. Um, the, the whether or not, and I think Bob has probably said this several times to folks, the decision on whether or not we get accepted is based on the severity of our problem, <coughs> what our, we deem our problem to be, and the number of schools that are interested and are seeking a grant from the MSBA. And she said out of 1,800 schools and districts across the state, this year they only took 16 to 17 projects. And she stressed several times they were the most neediest in the state. So I think that, um, that, that if we decide we want to move forward, that shouldn't deter us. But you just need to be aware that if we did enter the SOI process this year, and weren't selected, we could continue to move it forward. Um, but it is based on need. Um, and there's no guarantee that we'd be accepted. And the cost of the feasibility study, we would bear, clearly we know that. And that would be something <coughs> that we would be looking to go to our towns um, for in May of next year. So. I have an opinion on it, but I'm going to hold off on my opinion because I'd like to hear from those of you around the table. And I believe that the request is to ask the school committee to approve the recommendation from the task force to submit this, the SOI. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> now, you know, again, I, I just want to be clear. I, I, the way MSBA wants this done is I think what you would do tonight is authorize the superintendent to prepare an, an SOI and then you would have to have another vote to actually submit it. Once and we do have a meeting April 6th. Yeah. So thank you for that. Anything else you want to add? Um, you know, I don't have a presentation. I'm here to answer questions. Okay. If, if you want some opinions, I'll give them to you. But <coughs> okay. I'll wait. So, why don't we start with Mark? What are your thoughts on? Um, I think it's a very strong document that's been created by the task force. It really carefully outlines a number of areas in which there is strong need for improvement and um, making the facility more appropriate to the current activities and population. Um, I would prefer to um, have a have a bit of a road show and carry carry our need as described in this document and bring it forth to the several towns and um, have conversations with the relevant boards in each town so that both their in a person to person basis understand what's um, in that document and also um, getting ready to really plan on potential significant financial activity down the road. So that's kind of where I stand. So before v we... I, I prefer to do that before we submit a statement. Of okay. Interest. So you're, you're, you're... I don't want to put words in your sure. mouth. Sure. So I would prefer at this moment to have that road show. I kind of doubt we'll be able to do it by April 8th. But um, to really do a consensus building activity um, and then presuming we manage some kind of consensus, we may not. Um, then carry forward um, 
further you know activity about our options is, and one of those options is the MSBA. So your recommendation is to move forward with the mm -hmm. SOI or not move forward with the um, SOI? I, I would prefer not to okay. move forward. All right, Nicole, thank mm -hmm. you. Mark. Yeah. What Mark said. What Mark said. Kathy. Um, the, um, the document, um, the final report, I think is very compelling. It identifies a number of needs. Um, and, and it struck me uh, being the difference in the, which, how I feel about the high school when nobody's there and when you're there and it's under full steam. And you get a different impression. The other thing that I see is that the way things are currently uh, configured, it's hard to think about improving curricula, improving uh, program. Um, I, I still think that some things could be explored in terms of, I know that things have been added without a consideration for space, mm -hmm. um, but aside from, from that, um, and, and I, I also, throughout, when I get on the Space Task Force, the idea of put changing the schedule, um, solve some of the problems. I don't know, but that wasn't our charge. I just like to ask questions to. That's okay. Whatever. So anyway, um, something needs to be done, and yep. I think that you we have to eliminate certain certain possibilities. So it would make sense from my point of view to um, put forward a statement of interest, but not until January. So um, of twenty seventeen. Of twenty seventeen, and then. We'll know whether we're we're eligible for for funding or not. If we're not eligible for funding, that doesn't mean that there are problems that we don't need to solve. There. Eligible there for funding outside of MSBA? No, no, no. Through the MSBA, they they give us permission to proceed with the feasibility study and right. all of that stuff. After you submit they the SOI. Yes, but that's your first step. Right. And I think that. From my point of view, this, this, there was a lot of work that needs to be done at the high school to make it, to make the, 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 the physical plant, the facility, commensurate with the level of teaching that goes on, the, the need for programs that really take into account the, the types of things <coughs> about, you know, the things that, that Dr. Brewer was trying to do with uh, curriculum integration, and STEM and, and a lot of other things and even even performing fine performing arts the facility doesn't really support those and it's just a real strength of the school so something needs to be done I'd like to see us move forward with an SOI but in January but I, I want people to be aware that even if the <coughs> we don't get the go ahead from MSBA we can do something about that high school Okay. In my opinion. So you would prefer to wait I support the SOI. I think it makes sense to do it in January. I also so agree with Mark that we make people aware. I think Bob has done an incredible job of, of you know, um, presenting. He's been at Tritown a couple of times. Um, he's met with town managers. But I think that we... So the question on the table is, guys, yes. the question on the table is, are we going to adopt the recommendation to submit the SOI now or not? That's what we need to get to. And you're saying you want to wait till January 17, so that means? If I say not now, I want to know that it will be back on the table. Well, we're, that, we're handling one at a time. Yes, you want to submit or no, you do not? Not now. Okay, the answer is no. Okay, but thank later. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Lord, today's going to be a fun one. Lynn. <laughs> uh, I, I agree with everyone, and also we're waiting on a, a population study that's going to come in probably after the deadline of April 8th. And, and, and that's the pretty telling. The population study did come up, and I asked her about that, and I think Bob mentioned this too. MSBA does its own population study, yeah. so. I think that population study will be interesting, mm -hmm. but I don't know that it's germane to what MSBA is going to look at when they yep. look at our situation. But, it, it but it's a good us point. A better feel too. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Times. All right, Neil. Hmm. Um, 
This isn't an easy answer. Uh, so, one of the uh, one of the things you were talking about with your conversation today with MSBA was that uh, they choose the schools based on need, <coughs> but how exactly are they determining what that need is prior to a SOI? Because I thought the SOI actually determines whether you're going to need a school, you're going to need repairs. The cetera. SOI gets you in the queue to say, we know we we need to do something. Here's what our issues are. And you have to define what those issues are, and then they do their work. They go in and they look at all of the schools that submitted SOIs over the course of the year, and they determine. So they're determining off of the paperwork itself, like basically what, what Kurt would fill out and send? They, they, I assume you're looking at me because you want reference. Well, come but on up to the table, because right. well, it's hard to see you. I know, let me at least get this out of the way. <laughs> They will send out study groups uh, to the different schools and they will evaluate the school's needs against the scope of the project and then they'll look at all, all the SOIs that they have, they'll look at the relative, um, uh, again, they'll compare the needs of, of one school versus another, one, one project versus another project and so on and so forth and then they'll say, we have this much money, our estimates for these, you know, we can, we can accommodate this many schools this year. We can commit this much money to it. So you don't even get examined. Uh, you certainly don't know whether you're going to get any money back from them until you submit the SOI. Uh, and, and that's what basically what the six month wait is for, is for them to go do their due diligence to invite people to take the next step. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, I've toured the school with an eye on the task force findings with Dr. Graham and pointed out a ton of things. I mean, it's very evident that, that there is work that's needed there. And I don't think anyone's saying that there isn't an issue or many issues. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I learned just last night with doing the superintendent search um, committee um, was we did discuss or were able to view people in various projects that they had put together uh, and found that um, through some of my reading and Googling, et cetera, that, and I'm, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna go with Mark on the Roadshow thing, that a lot of um, the very successful projects that literally met zero resistance uh, really were based upon really successful road shows, getting the TV, uh, the TV, the town involved, um, having, you know, basically some Q&A sessions as town meeting style Q&A sessions. Uh, and that took a, a number of months to do for a couple of the more successful projects. But, I mean, there's nothing but praise through the whole process and support behind that. And my concern is right now, if we do push forward, um, it's going to be divisive they're gonna it, the ton of work you guys have put in I think is definitive I think I agree with it I think it's there's not a question that I have at this point but I do think that the optics kind of have to really weigh the, the you know they have to stand the test of, of the towns and so forth at this point because I don't want to put that SOI in and then get all <coughs> pushed back and then have to pull it back out you know what I mean with the towns you know and, and then have to revisit it because now we're kind of push pull and we are creating problems that way with I think it, it must be good. so where are you at um, so I'm I'm kind of with Kathy actually I would like to see this revisited um, but if we can start some active conversations in the towns and get this out there a little bit and get that feedback and then I'd love to bring that back to the table for an SY as soon as possible okay thank you um, all right so through the conversation I had with her you know this one this this particular issue because we've had a lot of issues this year that we've had to tackle um, this one is the one that's kept me up a lot because for the people that work in that building day in and day out, they're the ones that have to deal with the workarounds and um, you know an outdated space with a contemporary curriculum and all the other systems issues, I mean physical systems issues in the building. So 
And I was on the space study, the space task force, for over a year, and I was a convert when I was on. Because you start to see, you listen to the people who are working in the building, you understand the issues that they have. And I think about, you know, the accreditation process we just went through and, and NEOSC mentioning the physical space, and that's an issue as well. And then I think we're, we're, we're really putting some concerted effort into the high school, and it's important with, you know, ensuring that the department head role is a more robust, useful, valuable role. We're looking at a, a reorganization at some point in the near future we don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but we know that we're going to be realizing some efficiencies with Dr. Bates's recommendations and possibly, you know, waiting until maybe a new superintendent comes or maybe not. Um, but then we have a new superintendent coming. And my biggest concern with moving forward with the SOI right now is that I have these nightmares about the science lab SOI or the science lab um, project that was initiated a few years ago that failed. And the reason in our town that it failed is that people thought that it just happened so quickly they didn't have enough understanding of what was happening, why do we need them, but well, we need science labs, well, why do we need them? We didn't do a good job, well we weren't on the committee at that point, but the, 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 the district didn't do a good job explaining what the issues were. So, like Kathy and Neil, I think I've come to the point where we know we need to do something. We've all acknowledged that. I feel like I'm trying to shoehorn us into the MSBA's timeline, even though they've extended the timeline, we, we're just kind of racing behind the train. So my suggestion would be, and I would wish I could pay you to stay on this project. <laughs> and I'm going to talk to you after the meeting. Because <laughs> I can't give you any money, I'm sorry. Um, we need to make a concerted effort to engage the community. I don't think of it as much as a road show as I think of it as a way to help people understand what the situation is, what the repercussions are, why it's time for us to do this, and where we need to go forward. And to those people that are working in the building, I am sure this is not an exciting thing to hear because you've got to deal with it. But I would just ask that you understand that we're undertaking a lot of heavy initiatives this year and we've got to prioritize them. And my recommendation would be let's get that next phase built now, identify the people in the group, start to build, um, conduct community um, forums so that we can have those discussions. I think the whole school committee needs to be involved. I mean, we don't have to be in every single one of them, but if we all feel that this is something we need to do, then we all need to show support for the project, and we need to get out into that community, each of our communities, and I think that's where we need to be so that we can make the decision and get that SOI to a point where there's no reason why they wouldn't <laughs> accept us and push it through in January. And I have to, I know this is disappointing for some people, and I, I feel like I need to apologize, but I can't because of all the other issues that we have to deal with. So, I think we need a vote. What are we voting on? You've got to, of the, well, the, what's in front of us is a proposal to have the interim superintendent work on preparing an SOI. Now, what we could do is we could vote to go ahead and prepare the SOI, but then, you, then we would have to vote on whether or not we want to accept the SOI and enter the MSBA grant process. For April. For April, April 8th deadline. So, but I, what's the difference between accepting or, or proposing we put together an SOI and saying that we'll do it for January. We can't do that? Well, no, you can't do that because we have elections coming up. We don't know who's going to be here. Well, that's true. Who's not? <laughs> I mean, many of us democracy. expect to be here, but yeah. you don't know. No, I hear you. Um, would could, like to be here. Yeah. Could, would it be possible to, to vote that and then 
have another, if we want to vote or make up, put it as an agenda item to actually formulate maybe a subcommittee of this committee to work on the yes. um, sharing information. And what I'd like to see is, is perhaps pulling in um, someone from each of the towns to work with the school committee to plan that public uh, information so I project. will um, all right so let's get to the vote first okay and then we'll do the next steps okay. I don't think there's a motion at this point too. does anybody want to make a motion so I'll, mo I'll move it positively and that so that we might vote it down what? <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's I, adding insult to injury well, so I move that we um, submit a, state, a statement of interest for April 8th of this year and I recommend I and I'm going to vote against it as, as just a way to make it clear what our plan is you want that to wait a minute that's not a motion <laughs> what's the motion so I move that we submit a statement of interest for April 8th of this year are you year. directing Dr. Bates to prepare an SOI no that's not the motion is there no. another motion we could make wait a minute stop there's a motion on oh. stop there's a motion on the table so you are Moving or, that or, or, or uh, I'll, I'll restate it contrarily then. Um, so I move that we <coughs> that we not prepare a statement of interest nor submit a statement of interest this year to the MSBA for the purpose of um, engaging with them to renovate the high school. Okay, that's a motion. But just if I can Good. say something, yes. when you say this year, you need to Meaning clarify 2016 by the April 8, 2016 MSBA deadline. Okay. Does that work? Sure. Thank you. Is there a second? Alita, can you read the motion back? Alita writes the official one. Okay. Oh, do you I, I'd like to hear it again. What's the motion? We move to not prepare a statement of interest for submission to the MSBA um, by the April 8, 2016 deadline. Is that accurate? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Is there a, a lot second? Of interest in seconding that, so that second. <coughs> Lynn seconded. Any more conversation other than what has already been discussed? You have a question? Now's the time to no, ask. No, I, I just want to reiterate that that I actually want to see something done, but I want it to be set up for success and not not have the potential of failure. Right. Period. Agreed. Right. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Please understand that we are struggling with this. We understand the need. We understand the amount of work. And I, I promise you I will be putting a subcommittee together so that we can garner community support in order to do this. OK. Well, that one didn't feel good. So are you going to create that right oh, now? What, the next? To. Yeah, uh, she's going to yell at me. So, do you want to tell her? <laughs> <laughs> what, is it? what is? No, I, I. So we made that vote. Can we? Do we have to vote or or put it on an agenda so that we can? I will. I, I will set up a subcommittee. That's what you tasked me with earlier this year. So I will Go build a subcommittee, meeting. and I'll take care of that. Probably needs to be an advisory committee because we want advisory. nine school committee right. members on it. Right, exactly. And, and can I'll, can I'll work put an end date on that. I think that's we'll a good idea. We'll make a closed in like so committee. I don't like the idea of this open ended thing that yeah. then can go on. If we're serious about doing this, I would suggest that we set up a committee for a certain period of time, and upon <coughs> the end of that committee, that we revisit the, uh, the SOI vote. January next year. Whatever, whatever we establish as the as the time, I think we need an end date on this. Otherwise, it ends up this open-ended thing that well, can just advisory committees die down. after the election, and you have to revive it after the election. So, yeah. so. I'm gonna. We, we, we've got a we've got an election coming. We've got open seats. <laughs> yeah, well, if I will set up build. The I will mean this build. I will election. build an advisory committee, mm -hmm. and then I will contact you folks. To see who wants to be on it, you can let me know. And but you do it after the election. I think we need to wait till after the election. Oh no, that's fine. As long as we do it, 
like in May after the election. Right. So I'm on this, guys. I'm with you. I'm not fighting you on this. I want this as much as you do. But I agree with Neil that we have to put. I think everyone does. Everybody agrees with Neil. I okay. So we're moving forward. So what we're gonna do? So I, I swear it's spring. It's the warm weather. I think there might be no harm in if you say making vote, the opportunity vote. to take that document around to committees without waiting till May. Um, may perhaps our humble chair of the. Um, task force might be willing to do that, and I think maybe the other school committee members would be willing to talk to their own towns. But I think mm -hmm. we don't necessarily need to wait till to do that initial. To build the advisory committee? Yeah, yeah we don't need well, to wait. Well, you can have the conversations yeah. if the poor man is interested. Right. And I, mean, I think in some individual school committee members are willing to talk to their own boards. Who are on the I would course. like to request that if you have discussions with different boards in the towns that you include the school committee members so that um, right. we can provide support <coughs> and perspective. I have a meeting I am presenting to the Bolton Advisory Committee on the 23rd. Okay. And I lobbed a call into the town administrator to Bolton today to say we completed our final report. I'd like to get in front of the Board of Selectmen uh, to present it, but I haven't heard back on any dates yet. You want me to follow up? No, I'll let you do that. That's no, your I'll thing. No, I'll follow up. I'll, I'll okay. find a couple of dates and, and coordinate All right. And I suspect Stowe people will be equally interested. Mm -hmm. in I think they all would yeah. be. I mean, this is a I big mean. initiative. Mm -hmm. I'll work on Lancaster. <laughs> I'll give it my best shot. All right. So, so the takeaways on this are we're going to set up an advisory. But in the meantime, once the May elections, in the meantime, we're all going to work with our own town boards and I think if you could engage with Bob if Bob's already setting these meetings up that we're present and supportive of the effort mm -hmm. and I can help work on a presentation yeah, too. Chairman, if I might, yes. be helpful. It might be in the interest of time as opposed to waiting until May in committees. You have now, you have, have you, you haven't adopted the committee. They have to adopt the committee, the report. All you had to do was no. The report's okay, the report. You are in receipt of it now, right. the final copy for the first time since it was only passed last night. A suggestion: if you disseminate that from the school committee to each of the boards of selectmen, finance committee, and capital planning committees <coughs> as soon as possible, uh, and say we will be contacting you and we want you to take it. Now, this is the final report. Please take it into consideration, and we're going to be talking seriously about it. And that will get the ball started with some of the committees, at least in my opinion. I can't speak to the others. All right, so maybe, Mark, can you give me all of the, um, the folks that would need to be reached? Sure. In Stowe and Kathy, if you can get boards of selectmen or I'll send it to Ryan, Ryan McNaught. Yeah, but. It, Beyond just sending it to him, right? To meet with him and say, let's get the show on the road. So right. We'll okay. Do, we'll do it. All right. And yeah. I'll follow up with you guys next week. One other like quest, maybe, or like throw it out there, and that's um, Dr. Bates. Do you think it's possible that Dr. Graham would actually open up the high school um, for maybe like an open house uh, sometime between now and? I, I mean, the reason I say this, and actually give, and actually allow the public in to have tours of the high school with the SOI points in mind, so they themselves have an opportunity to take a look at the issues that have, that are being addressed and, or that are looking to be addressed. And I think that's a great idea. I, I, I would want that to be really coordinated so it's not like, right. look at all our problems, it's... Absolutely. Yep. Bob? I, I would suggest that just having a general open house like that this far away from asking anybody to commit money mm -hmm. is is going to be it's going to be tough to pull people in right. on the other hand if you ask the select boards of stowe to mm -hmm. pick a date when they want to do the, an open house or the select boards of bolton and the select or the select boards of lancaster when they mm -hmm. want to do dates i think um, that would promote your education more than just having a general open house. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Okay. 
and I'll touch base with, well, I'll work mm -hmm. with you to touch base with Dr. Graham. Great. That's good. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you all. All right. Moving on. Um, the 2016-17 school year calendar. I don't know if anybody's here from Looks like in the far corner. Mm -hmm. oh, the 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 Pardon? From the calendar committee? From the calendar committee? No, okay. So with regards to <coughs> the 2016-17 calendar, um, I'm going to suggest that we have a conversation about it, but I'd like us to hold off on voting on it because I've asked Dr. Graham through Dr. Bates to come back and explain to us, provide value um, illustrate the value of the 12 late starts and do we need 12 late starts and does that time out of the classroom um, equate to yeah I'm not saying this right my head's not in it. No, no, to me, um, when we had the forum with the schools um, one of the teachers expressed to me that they loved them because they got a lot done yeah collaboration but he lost three days so we said what was happening was at the end of the year they were really rushing the material because they lost three days of school time. So, waited to three days. so that's the question is, do we need 12 late starts? First of all, are the, are the late starts valuable? Are they getting something out of it? And what are they getting out of it? And how is he measuring that? Do we need 12 of them? What's, and, and so he's going to come back and share some information with us on the, at the um, well, April 6th meeting on the late starts. And I'm wondering if all of them across the board have the same value because I'm wondering if if they all take advantage of that, you know, what percentage of them take advantage? Right, of he has done a sur he has done a survey. Okay. And so that's what he's had asked if he could have time just to so he can put it together and present to you on the sixth. All right. So it's kind of like a, so you want us to vote after the sixth? Yeah, I, we want to wait till the sixth because I think we need to hear that because I've had a lot of parents call me about their concern that they think it's great the late starts are great the kids love them. We know the teachers like them, but they're concerned about the time away from the classroom. <coughs> Neil. Um, Dr. Graham, it, years Dr. ago. Dr. Bates? I'm sorry, Dr. Bates. Yeah. What is going on? I know. Now? Spring. Dr. Bates, I apologize. Um, no there used to be years ago, years and years ago, um, you had either a certain number of days that yes. you had to you participate in school or Some hours. Days, hours. So many hours. So, so you, have be, you have to meet the minimum re requirement. Right, but the but the districts could choose whether they wanted days and hours type of thing at one point no, it's, in time? It's, a, it's, a, it's hours. It's always you, have, you have 180 days, however, yeah. you have, but you also have to meet within the hours. And you have right now, we have 180, the teachers are 184, but, you, but yeah, it's, it's the hours. I, I just didn't know if there's any way that we can, we can look work that within to see, that to make to see how these Right, to make some of these things work. My understanding is you do, but I I don't know. Did anybody ever do a when the they were proposed when the late starts were proposed? Did anybody check to see if that impacted your nine ninety hours? Well, there's a worksheet that the ESC has for that, correct? Okay. It would be good information to have. I'm pr I I believe that came up. Didn't that come up when we talked about this last year? Mm -hmm. When Perry, when Dr. Graham presented to us the first time um, about it. And Michael was here. I don't remember. I thought we talked about it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No problem. Anything else on the calendar? I have one more thing. Mark, you've got uh, a quick question. How are s potential snow days handled? Are there sort of extra days in the calendar, and that yes. way, yes, they can get used. Snow days are snow days are a automatically added on. S so right now, there's. A surplus of days in the calendar so that if you have several it's no change in the actual dates well you you have you figure out your 180 days mm -hmm. and then you add in so several. Many snow, right, right so that you have to you add it on you've had two snow days so that it, so let's say you were going to get out on June 17th now it's then it fall now it's the 19th that's just an example you not know, getting out on June 19th right so right Any other questions on the calendar? I, I have a request, though. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I really do want to know. Right now, the calendar has, the recommendation is the, third, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving would be a half day. 
and then Christmas, the 25th of December, is on a Sunday. And the recommendation in the current proposal is that we would have a half day on the Friday, which is the 23rd. It actually says closed right now. It says closed, yeah. So, oh no, it was, I did it wrong, I did it backwards. Yes. Right. Half day on the 23rd. It's a half day on the 23rd and no school. Half day. Um, half day on Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving. Right. And then day off the Friday before. Right. 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 And I'd like to flip that. And the reason I'd like to flip that is because Thanksgiving is the heaviest traveled holiday. Half a day before Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the comments I got from parents was, they're just going to be watching a movie. So <laughs> I'd like to see us, to, and this year we had, or this past Thanksgiving, we had the Wednesday off before Thanksgiving. And people seem to like that. We so that out at the end of the year. So it, I think we fla we we no. took it away from someplace else. She wants to take the. Uh, I, I think you're going to get a lot of pushback on December 23rd. Well, actually, in Bolton, for those who are on the community pages, the majority of people want to take the day before Thanksgiving off versus the half day before Thanksgiving. I think no matter what you choose, mm -hmm. I think this is a ha this is split down the middle, and people are complaining now because of what the calendar says. But if we switch it around the other way, we'll hear from the other half of the people who who mm. don't want it. I don't agree, but I'm just putting it out there if everybody. Well, disagrees. if that's what I can say between the two of us, yep. fifty percent of us want <laughs> <laughs> to go to school on the twenty third of December. And Fifty percent of us do not. Okay. So that's the answer. We can't give both the days off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so then you add on yeah, the day, day, day of the year. <laughs> Any students watching this? Who's your friend? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, he's gonna make Uncle Neil. Cool <laughs> not even a selection year either. Yeah. <laughs> that's not right. No. Kath. I I have felt <laughs> that if it is important for parents to have that as a travel day kids won't come to school on that day. Right. And the same thing with, if you do that on the 23rd, you will have some kids that, that just won't come. And I mean, that's, that's typically what happens. Um, I would want to know also what faculty and staff feel, because that would impact them on the 23rd. I mean, th so this year there was no school on the 23rd of November. Yes. All right, because every place else is like a half day, and that's when you have the high school pep rally and all that good stuff. And movies. Sometimes movies, sometimes yeah. other stuff. But anyway, um, I guess I'm more concerned about the 23rd and having that as a half day. The 23rd in December? Yes, because they both the 23rd. So I would check it out. The survey the doesn't really give us any indication. No, the survey, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, six to one half day. Because on the 23rd of December, they're going to be watching movies. Then, if that's, I mean, if that's, if if that's the up. logic of, you know, I mean, right, but that's, and then if you make it so that somebody gets a day off before, well, then they might be pulling their kids out, figuring, you know, if I just do a half day the day before, I'm going to miss all that extra craziness at the airport, so why don't I just pull them out the one day before? Oh, and I just see it's a wormhole when I'm down No, with I, that. I know, I agree. It's and I also want to acknowledge the work that the calendar committee did put in, right. did put into this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that they had these conversations also, and for whatever reason, and we have time to ask them now, why, why did they choose mm -hmm. so you're gonna this? Ask them? You want to ask that. them? Can they come when Perry comes? Can they can come? So, can the representative come? He's writing. Thank you, Dr. Bates. <laughs> what? Is school committee member of the calendar committee? No. No. It's all I was on the calendar committee. Oh, okay. oh well. You we were? can ask you. Okay. What do you got? All right. So where are we leaving it? Where Dr. Bates is, ugh, Dr. Grant, Dr. Graham is coming in on April 6th. So first and do you want? somebody from the calendar yes. committee to come also. Yes, I believe that would be okay. ideal. 
And you might want to give him a heads up on some of this. I will. Thank you. And you want something on the 990 hours? Yes. yes. It would be good to know. Okay. Actually, if the, if the folks to see that worksheet, yes. to see how it's figured out, because that keeps everything mm -hmm. above board. That's a great idea. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And one final thing, I, I understand the clerks are a little hazy as to whether they might want a September school slash election day. Mm -hmm. I think that they were just giving us the heads up that they're going to be using the facility on a different day than we were I originally see. expecting. And November 8th is the day you're going to use, right? No, mm -hmm. uh, September 8th, too. We have two September? elections in the fall. And the state moved the Tuesday, September 6th, to now Thursday. September 8th, which is the first week of school, Thursday. Oh. Yeah, the Thursday. So, so they need to know So that. we we have November 8th as a PD day right now, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's the election. Um, yeah. And it's... Well, the eight, September 8th is just a normal day right now. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what the turnout's going to be. I mean, a lot of uh, September primaries usually aren't that huge of a turnout. So in Stowe, if we're getting the sense it won't be that big, we can use the music wing rather than the gym. But if Kate Hogan is opposed, we'll probably be in the gym yeah. for the first week of school with all the kids, the public going back and forth, just like we did this past March. So it's a big inconvenience in Stowe. Um, but it's just a heads up. There's really nothing we can do about the state voted. It's, it's Thursday, September 8th. Okay. We try to get them to move it to August every year, and they won't do it. Before school's open, we try. <laughs> the clerks do. Okay. And I know in Bolton, when we have an election, they like to ask us not to have school on that. November, for sure. Yeah. Like, that's one thing. You guys vote on the calendar committee. That's the only thing I'm here is to make sure November <laughs> stays day. We off. heard. We <laughs> heard. Yeah, so we <laughs> heard. <laughs> We're believers. No, yeah, no parent-teacher conference is anything. That's, yes. Yeah. That's the main thing. But September, sadly, it will not be a great day for the schools. Well, there's nothing we can do about it, though, right? No, I mean, we both in the schools. So it's the calendar can be on that one, too. Thank you. Down. Okay. Um, any more discussion on the calendar? No? All right. We're moving along. Nicole Policy, Second Reading Affordable Care Act. This is just the second reading of a new policy. Monica presented it to us um, the first time, you'll remember. Uh, according, I did not hear anything back from any members of the committee as far as any changes that they would like to, um, to submit. And so I'm asking for a motion to adopt ADD, Affordable Care Act, and um, we'll be done with it. Motion to adopt. AGD Affordable Care Act. And this is a brand new one, right? Is that a call? Yes. And uh, we, it was adopted from an existing one? Um, no, it's, um, I want to explain. It's part of, because of the new Affordable Care Act, yeah. we needed to be in compliance. And from what I understand, this is fairly boilerplate. This is from MASC? I, it's from a lawyer. Yeah, I don't attorney. believe so. I think she said an attorney gave it to her. Yes. Our attorney? No. To the school attorney? This is the one we read February 11th when we were at Luther Burbank. Yes. Oh, I know. I just want, I just want to make sure. I mean, you say it came from an attorney, but I'd like to know that it's somebody that's looking out for our best interest. That's all. Just the requir yeah. requirements of the Affordable Care Act, which are being modified and come out this upcoming year. So the and they impact. Um, and I get that. But is it the state? This, this was written by the state lawyer that was recommended or through MASC? I don't know the source. So wait a second. Who brought this policy forward? Our director of HR? Our director of HR okay. brought this forward. So I would think that the director of HR is bringing this policy forward, that she would not bring something forward if it right. weren't appropriate. And I feel comfortable adopting it. So I second Neil's motion that we adopt the ADG Affordable Care Act policy for the Neshoba Regional School District. All right. Any questions, comments? I have a typo improvement, which I can just needs to be a space in one spot. So oh, I'll that's all right. Over. You can give that to Alita. Okay. Or <laughs> 
Okay. All those in favor of adopting the policy? Mark, Neil, Kathy, Nicole, Rain. All those opposed? And abstentions. <laughs> Lynn's abstaining. Yes. That's okay. That's all right. Thank you. All right. Subcommittee report outs. Mr. Jones, do you have one? The finance <coughs> committee did not meet, but I would like to say a few prospective things. Um, I think the finance committee might meet over the next several weeks and we may have a couple of policies to send over to the policy committee. Um, so just collaboration. So a little bit of anticipation might be uh, forthcoming on the Wonderful. policy side of the thing. Great. Thank you. <coughs> um, Kathy, go to you. Um, yeah, there have been um, um, a few personnel subcommittee meetings since the last report, and we have been looking at um, non union job descriptions and um, uh, received a lot of information, asked a lot of questions, received a lot of um, information back from um, the HR department. And uh, at uh, the meeting, I think it was the February 22nd meeting, we had brought up at um, school committee what we do about the uh, uh, superintendent's evaluation. And um, Dr. Bates reached out to the executive director of NASS, Tom Scott, um, and this is what he had to say. Uh, this is Tom Scott. We've had questions in the past on this, and while technically the answer is yes, that you do have to evaluate, the practical answer and the way most have handled it is no, especially if you are doing it uh, for an interim of less than one year. If they, I think that means us, feel they want to do it, I would suggest a very abbreviated process with minimal indicators around the standards as relevant to the interim role. And so this personnel subcommittee voted to bring a recommendation to the school committee regarding evaluating the interim superintendent. And this is the, um, the motion that we would recommend, that we wanted to bring forward. Um, we recommend that the school committee not follow the DESE model for superintendent evaluation for evaluating the interim superintendent. The subcommittee will bring forward to the school committee an abbreviated process with minimal indicators around the standards as relevant to the interim schools. So we will be doing... <coughs> well, we, we're bringing, presenting it to the school committee. Um, the, the personnel subcommittee is making this recommendation to the school committee. We voted to bring it forward. So now do they have to vote on it? I would think so. Yes. Okay. So can I make the motion? Yeah. I move that we not follow the DESE model for superintendent evaluation for evaluating the interim superintendent. The subcommittee will bring forward to the school committee, or do I need to do two motions, or is this okay <coughs> to just roll it all together? Okay. You can do this too. Do it. All right. You're in the middle of the motion. Yeah, the subcommittee will bring them. forward to the school committee an abbreviated process with minimal indicators around the standards as relevant to the interim schools. Thank you. Second. Second. Mark. Any questions? Nicole. <coughs> I have a little time to think about it. What? <laughs> well, you need to talk about. It. Let's talk about it. What do you want to? Um, I don't. I don't know. I. I mean, this is just a brand new idea that is. Um, is well, we've got to provide an evaluation for a superintendent. Mm -hmm. So we either evaluate the previous superintendent, or mm -hmm. we evaluate the superintendent who's going to be here with us for the majority of the school year. However, because it's in the middle of the school year, we didn't have the goal setting, a evaluative setup that we would have had. Mm -hmm. So I think what Kathy's saying is we've got to do an Something. evaluation. And what this gentleman has said from Desi is you can do a modified evaluation. So there's no way we could do a full evaluation on Dr. Bates because mm -hmm. we didn't do any goal setting. We, I mean, from the beginning right. of the year with all that effort. So we've got to do something. And if the recommendation or if the suggestion from Desi is to do a modified evaluation, I'm really good with that. <laughs> because we've got to do something. Yes. You have to have something in the system. Can yes. I just clarify something? Yeah. Because you said Did I do something wrong? No, it's not from Desi. It's from MASS. MASS. So oh. just clear on that. Oh, well, then forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, that's pretty serious about that. No, it's just evaluation. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be evaluated? No. I do. <laughs> I told him what I thought. Go, go for it. Oh, are the other options? I'm sorry? Yeah, the motion second, but this is... Can I use this question? Are you saying that the other option? The other option is we evaluate the previous superintendent, right? No, we can't no, we do can't. that. I thought we could. No, it's an oh, agreement. Because we should not. Oh, but that's you know, right. I actually think it's probably a really good idea to come up with a short version of one because it helps us kind of establish some things. You know, because we didn't set goals. Because, you know, as we're going to have to do that anyways for the bump the next year, but it might help us solidify some ideas. Yeah. Well, if mm -hmm. we pass this, my suggestion would be that um, the personnel subcommittee uh, put together something. Um, I mean, Dr. Bates has outlined some goals. We look at those. We sort of go back into the standards for evaluating uh, the superintendent and match them up, and then we can bring that back to the committee. Well, we would do that with Dr. Bates, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. do it without okay. him. And, and find out where they fall into right. the standards. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But then we're marrying it to the, the rubric. Right. <clears throat> um, but if folks remember, uh, people on the personnel subcommittee, we started over the summer to work on, and then to learn the process. I mean, we had put a lot of work into it, and that work's not lost because we'll be able to use it um, with a new superintendent, but we can modify that work. I think you and Lynn are saying the oh, yeah. same thing. Okay. And I, and I think that and makes really sense. Does, does that make sense to you? <laughs> is that answer? It answers. A question? Mm -hmm. All right, we need to vote. All those in favor? Neil, Mark, Kathy, Lynn, Lorraine, all those opposed? All those abstaining? Nicole's abstaining. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, policy report. <laughs> policy report. Um, policy met today. Um, Mark Jones, uh, the finance chair, joined us so we could talk in depth about the school choice policy that will come to the committee for a vote at the next meeting, we're hoping. Uh, it was very substantive and we had a, we had a nice long conversation <coughs> about it. Uh, we are one policy away from completing our communication goal of going over our communication <laughs> policies. So that's a nice thing. And um, and those policies will also hopefully be coming to you at our next school committee meeting. Good. And the chemical. You say, you say uh, what you would like. Health, and the chemical health policy, we're going to be getting some updates on some questionnaires that were sent out to middle schools. Uh, we don't have all the uh, all the feedback yet. Uh, and possibly follow-up questions to both the high school and one of the middle schools that has responded, um, just to get better clarification on a couple of the questions that we had. Okay, that sounds good. <coughs> and did you guys get the correspondence uh, from somebody in Stone? They were saying that there was a policy that needed to be looked at, and it's escaping me which one it was. So let's do that in correspondence. Seven? No, seven. Um, who wants to do the update on the space study? There's no report. Nicole, CPAC. I have no report. Okay, thanks. Tech committee report. Neil, do you have anything? Uh, tech committee is now putting to, we met actually yesterday, and uh, oh. tech committee is putting together a, uh, basically a, a version of climate survey for technology. Uh, they're working to whom? To the uh, faculty, oh. and staff, and. Um, Good for them. They're working hard on, on making some very useful, uh, some very useful questions that will produce some some decent data uh, for everything from everyday technology use to the one to one initiative, et cetera. Um, so that's great. I think it's going to help them a lot. That's great. Then they can use that to build their goals. That's great. Um, emergency response committee. Kathy's not here. Neil, you didn't attend that, did you? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. So there's no report on that. And superintendent search committee, Neil, do you want to? <coughs> so there was an executive session last night. There was an executive session. Um, 
and uh, it was like you said there were 22 um, initial candidates uh, we have um, I think I think I can say this that we've um, actually identified um, nine candidates that we'll be bringing in uh, next week for uh, three days of interviews oh you'll be inviting to we'll be right yeah. inviting um, <laughs> there was a very strong pool of candidates and we had a lot of conversation going back and forth about the uh, about the candidates um, it's exciting and I think you know I mean I'm just looking at the paper right now but I think we're gonna have a tough time trying to choose who's who's the better um, I really Good. do I, and, and I hope that's I hope that's a high-class problem as far as I'm concerned yep um, so we'll see how that goes great thank you awesome. thank you very much thanks to Nicole and Neil for serving on the committee and the other folks how many of those nine are in versus out I don't know. We can't really beyond what I told session. you, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds like nine are in. And we need to wait to the and room. not go any further <coughs> than that. <laughs> um, okay. Superintendent's report. Um, <coughs> I met with the uh, teaching and learning coordinators with Dr. Graham. Uh, as I told you, they're starting to meet with him every other week. It was a great discussion. Uh, talking about professional development plans for the high school and coordinating that and getting a plan together uh, so that they'll have a roadmap. Uh, for next year and hopefully the following year for them awesome. and really looking at uh, how they can be helpful uh, in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, a, um, I met with the principals yesterday. Uh, they did a, uh, saw a presentation by Nicole Johnson and with Tracy Conti regarding DBT initiative, the behavioral piece and uh, discussion about DDMs, about the teacher evaluation process and, and uh, entering the data. Um, so that's going on. And then um, there was an uh, update on professional development needs for the Spring Academy and the Summer Academies. Those are going out. Uh, your nas the National Lunch Program, uh, we received a letter from DESE about your uh, District Food Service Administrative Review Corrective Actions, and everything has been submitted and uh, indicated that all, all issues have been identified and adequately addressed so far. Can I ask um, if, if we could just say what those issues were, or are have we not allowed You to never saw the report? I personally don't recall. Have we, have we you seen didn't, Did you know about the? This is news when I read this, so okay. I was not aware of this. Yeah, that fine. This was done last year, uh, later, or earlier this year, so you never got it? I, I just received a letter saying that all the corrective action pieces were submitted to them and everything's cleared up, so. <laughs> So, which is great, but now you need to know what the corrective actions were. Okay. My assumption that was this was done before I came that you saw no. the report. We will get that to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, also, we received a notification um, from the, the Massachusetts uh, Department of Labor Relations, just notifying us that the district was in non-compliance uh, with having the um, uh, collective bargaining contracts posted and Alita has already notified them and uh, they they wanted copies of them but if they're online they just needed to no notify that but um, it, they did not have it listed that your, your district had them posted so that's all been taken care of thank you, thank you. <coughs> I've started my informational meetings uh, they continued I met with all the um, social workers and guidance counselors on the 11th and on the 14th uh, the high school guidance uh, group um, yesterday met with at Hale school uh, five people attended I met uh, that evening uh, on the 14th with uh, community that afternoon with community members who were eight, eight people showed, showed up um, met with the team chairs and some administrative assistants today and uh, I will continue tomorrow. I have a community meeting at nine, and then at uh, Florence Sawyer in the afternoon, and then the high school staff Friday morning, and then uh, Burbank and uh, next week. And then I have some individual people who've called to uh, talk to me privately. So wow, you have been thank you we'll for continue all this to, effort. Yeah, continue to do that. So is the is the plan tweaking at all? Based on conversations? No. I can't answer that right now until I have all the yeah. input in. 
<coughs> so I'm listening and, and listening to concerns and uh, comments and that sort of thing. So. Uh, and now to DECA. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Neil, did you hear about DECA? I did. <laughs> <coughs> So last week they were in competition, and you have 11 of your uh, <coughs> district members who uh, finished in the top five categories wow. in the state, and they will be going on. Uh, you have Kayla Murphy and Brianna Murphy and Katie Crowley uh, placed second in business service operations research. Uh, and tell me if I said the names wrong. You got those right. <laughs> yeah. Amelia uh, Bernaconi. Connie and Kate Anderson and Jake Hicks scored second place in hospitality tourism and operations research. Uh, Jordan Vias and Victor uh, Lemus, third place in sports and uh, entertainment operations research. <coughs> Megan uh, Boussier and Will Chapman, fourth place in finance operations research. Jordan Brady, uh, third place in hospitality and tourism and professional se uh, selling. And they will be going on to um, Nashville. Uh, and so I will have all that information. I'm going to be meeting with um, the advisor we spoke today and once he has all the plans set. Who is the advisor? Stavros. Stavros. Yeah. And, uh, so. mm -hmm. and then you had um, the rest of these students uh, finished in the top ten. Uh, Krista uh, Flinkstrom, Apparel and Accessory Marketing, and Kyle Tremblay, uh, Entrepreneurship and Innovation Plan, and uh, Dan Kilkenny and Patrick Nair, uh, Entrepreneurship and Innovation Plan, and Nick Calusi, Katie Piccoli. <laughs> what do you got here? Like I think I know everybody's name. Piccolo Piccoloi. And Ben uh, Cito, Independent Business Plan. Uh, Jake Sharing, uh, Ishan Maloyo. No, I, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> Nate Cunningham, uh, Independent Business Plan. Uh, Jack Hurd, uh, Entrepreneurship Startup Plan, Alan Castillo, Ent Entrepreneurship Startup Plan, Devin Duggan, James Kilgo, and Devin Barrett, uh, International uh, Business Plan, Jake Fire, Owen Fay, and Alex Jacobs, uh, Buying and Merchandising Operations Research, uh, Marissa uh, Kelberman, Hospitality and Tourism Operations Research, Kyla Shea and uh, Catherine Pelletier, Finance Operations Research, Helen Cosby, uh, Maria Guerin, and Tony Day, Advertising Campaign, Jonah Lemieux, and Jack Cito, Sports Entertainment Promotion Plan, and Matt uh, Allaire, Chris Bell, and Charlie uh, Lamplo, uh, Sports and Entertainment Promotion Plan. So you have a great... That's a lot of kids. And you have somebody behind you <laughs> who also... And who is that? Can we see, can you put the camera on him? <laughs> Please? <laughs> That's not fair. What did you do? Uh, international business plan. Awesome. So we came in fifth. So if any of the top four teams don't go to nationals, we can go. <coughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. And we're so glad you're back. Thank you. Great. Can I ask a question? Um, how will the students going to Nashville be funded? That's I'm going to be. I just found this out today, so oh. that's why uh, Savas and I are going to be meeting. Okay. And uh, find out all of that information. Uh, and also remember, you had a donation that was given. To oh, that's oh. right. To help out with with that. So. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. That's all you have. I believe so. Mm -hmm. Well, it was uh, we met last week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. We did last week. I just I don't want everyone to be unhappy. We aren't meeting again until April sixth. I know we've been meeting weekly, <laughs> and I'll miss you all. Um, so correspondence, Lynn, now bring up your, make sure when you get pieces of correspondence, you shuttle them over to Alita so she can, oh, I thought to everybody. Okay. she can list that um, the new protocol <coughs> is the individual's name, the town they're from, and then there's a, a descriptor of what they um, were writing to us about, and of course, if anybody wants them, they can get the originals from Alina. I have my phone number too. It was just in the day, but it was a. So a what was it? It was from Kathy. It was a. Um, oh, I, I know what it was. Yeah, it was a policy issue that it was really old. Was it policy? It wasn't the bullying thing? Yeah, it was mentioned as part of it. Um, we had, um, I think I got the same one. It was somebody who was. Um, 
said that the bullying intervention and prevention plan was supposed to be updated every two years and it hadn't been updated since um, 2013. So did you send that I, over she, to? No, because she wanted to know if she should let Dr. Bates know and I said oh. yes, she didn't indicate that she wanted it part of the school committees. I directed her to Dr. Bates. All right. Because she didn't direct it to the school committee. But when she, anybody sends you something, it becomes public. But I already told you. So it. when we receive correspondence. Okay. Okay. All right. Are we good? And you got the. You're all set. Um, any questions? Did you guys read the minutes? Yes. Lynn. <coughs> <clears throat> what is it, Lenny? Nothing I didn't read. Oh, well, <laughs> unfortunately, did, did everyone else read the minutes because we're assuming that yep. they're good to go? Um, I'm actually assuming that, did that get inserted? I sent a thing to you about. The final copy is in the packet, which. Okay, cool. Your 504 statement? Yes. And your correcting of your Mr. Your yes. Your demo, your de My, my demotion in life, yes. Yes, yes Dr. Darcy. You can read yeah. the statement in the reorganization if you to see if it reflects. Awesome. Thank you. I'm sure it does. Are we good? So we don't have to move, vote on those. Let's move. All right. Next agenda. I'm Kathy. I don't know if this is for our discussion um, or we need to have more information. A couple of times I brought up the need to get more information or discuss. <coughs> Um, classes at the high school with enrollment of less than 10. And I understand that in the core academic area, there are classes, AP classes, that we, you're not going to get a lot. I think uh, a while ago the decision was made to um, allow those, uh, just as you have lower enrollment in some classes where kids need more support, it's important that we maintain these accelerated and honors and AP classes <coughs> um, for those kids who need that challenge. I'm looking in particular at um, electives and things like um, molecular gastronomy had seven kids in it. And then there is a list of, I think it is, um, theater classes. Um, and the, the, the class load for this the teacher who is at 0.8 is about 44. I'm aware that last year that position was at 0.6. 0 0.2 was added. I'm aware that Dr. Grant had thought that this would build the program. I don't know that it's prudent if it's not building to, to maintain that. I know that's not, uh, it's my opinion. And I'd like to know um, more about it and at what point a decision is made to, to cut a program. I know we have guidelines at the elementary level um, for class size. Um, there is some grace, if you will, extended to middle school, at least in the core academic areas, to maintain the concept of teaming at the middle school. Um, so I think we need to look at that. Uh, there is a CrossFit class with six kids in it, a Tone Body Workout class with nine kids in it, um, and I think the rest are, are academic classes. So I, I just want to know, and, and I think in light of how um, tight we made the budget and some of the other, um, you know, things that we have done, we, we need to look at this. If the program hasn't grown, um, and, and you know what I think, I think that that's the that's the crux of it. Are they new programs that they're trying to get off the ground, or not? So I would say we need your help with this. The course description booklet for the kids actually, you should probably know, says and there's a disclaimer in there that says you may sign up for a course, but if there isn't enough kids that sign up, then we can't offer that particular right. class. Right. I guess, you know, what is the cutoff at that point, you know, that justifies having a class is what Kathy's asking. Right, and I think that's where we need some perspective from Dr. Bates. I mean, Dr. It is Graham. Dr. Bates. Oh, from oh. Dr. Bates. No, he's Dr. Dr. Bates. Dr. Graham. Yeah. Um, We've never had so many PhDs. <laughs> yes. There used to be a minimum number at which you'd run a class. 
But I see, I don't know. I don't know if I would buy that because, like you said, some of those classes. One of the things, the other right? point I want to make is that they're doing um, registration now. Right. You get in your registration. It may look like you have enough kids to run a class, and then you run the schedules, and things get thrown out if they don't fit with your schedule. Right. So it can get winnowed down very easily. But this is two years in a row where there has been low enrollment, and I just think it, it's worth um, examining. So we'll ask Dr. Yes. Graham to come in and, and talk to us. And Kathy I have has another, another comment. Thing. Yes. No, it's about agenda items. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, Actually, before you leave that, <coughs> would it be appropriate to ask um, Dr. Graham to provide a, a narrative to help? I think we just said that. that. I yeah. mean, um, it's written as opposed to oral. So that there's a, um, something to refer to and opportunity for him to expound in ways that he might not orally. Uh, that, why don't we have him come and present? I don't want to assign a tome <coughs> because he may do a presentation. He will give us a presentation, I'm sure. But let, let's do that. There's a guide. There's a guideline I'll give you too for presentations. Okay. That's helpful. Okay. The other thing um, I'd like us to talk about at some point is um, doing a, um, an evaluation or not unlike NASBO does, but it could be less formal and we might engage somebody, um, to look at technology, an objective third party to come in and look at our systems, our infrastructure for one, and then on the other side of it to have schools that are really at the cutting edge of um, technology, instruction, curriculum, best practice to come in and look at what our program is and give us feedback. I think that there are some, um, being on the, the technology committee, looking at their, their goals, um, the, the, the technology plan, I, I think that there are some things, in, in my opinion, that are missing. I think that we can learn from school systems that are at a cutting edge, and I just think that okay. we could have an objective third party. So document. why don't you and Neil on the technology committee take that to the technology group and ask them to put something together? You realize, though, the scope and what it is you're trying to do needs to be identified and you also know there's going to be a cost associated with that. Oh well, yeah, but I just I want to have the conversation I, and find out what the So what have it in the have the it in that group. The cost of working with schools and having them come in is nothing. Yeah, but bring it to us. All right. Bring it to us is versus that okay? It's not that easy. It's because we're a chicken and egg we're, we're literally we're in a chicken and egg situation right now because we have a technology plan but we don't necessarily have a clearly articulated vision of what that technology plan should be. Uh -huh. And I really think before we start bringing people in to analyze what we have, we have to have a, a basic statement of purpose or a vision as to what we're doing. And I think once we get that established, then we can say, here's, here's where we want to be, here's what we want to be, and we can look at schools and so forth that have achieved All right. particular All right, so visions. why don't we do this? Again, tasking you with... Yeah. Go so do I what you need to do to and Neil bring it forward. about this and not be in violation of anything? I don't like, think so. If you're doing it in the technology so subcommittee the or the here. technology no, advisory. Not, this isn't there are two ways to approach it. We're, well, we're, that's a good question because we are representatives on, that's technically a high school committee. I mean, it's not Oh, it's not district-wide? It is district wide. Yes, it is. It's district wide. Well, it's held at the high school. It's district wide, but it's it's so it's staff, committee. basically. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. It's administrative committee <coughs> that we are part of. Part of. Uh -huh. So does that put us with, you know, open meeting law type of things? Neither one of you is on the but same. But they are a quorum of the policy committee. But, but we're, we're not, not talking about policy. policy no, we're policy. talking technology. Right? Yeah. Well, I don't know, but that 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 was a good no, one. I would have jumped on that. Yeah, no, that was good. I would have jumped on that. As long as I don't. Conduct an RSD policy business. Right, right, and we're not. Yeah, yeah. it would be strictly technology. Knock yourselves out. Alita, what else do we have? Okay. Do we have any other items? Because uh, I might have them if not with me. For the sixth? Yes, for the sixth. You have. 
five policies that the sub that the policy committee is ready so far. Um, we have the ninth grade leveling pilot presentation from the high school um, that Lorraine, I mean um, Loretta Williams, will be presenting. And that's all I have so far. Okay, and Dr. Graham, do you have? Dr. Bates. Swing your name uh, tag around so she Have you see anything it. you'd like to share? <coughs> Not at this point. I'm all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. I believe so, I would like to call to your attention that we only have one April meeting scheduled. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. And we have elections coming in May. Yes, we do. So I wonder, perhaps there might be some conversations about additional meetings uh, or not. How do you guys feel about adding <coughs> a meeting in April? Well, we have a school vacation smack dab in the middle of that, mm -hmm. too. That's right. where our next meeting would be. That's why we didn't right. schedule one. Yeah. Yeah. Calendar. And then you have your, when are you doing, you won't know when you're doing your, your finalist interviews either. No. Yeah. That'll be coming up. Do you have that date? Yes. We it's have it identified the week is identified. I think it's the last week in April. Okay. So then the only day available would be the 13th as a Wednesday to meet. Well, I guess the question I have is, why do we need the meeting? Are we adding it just to add a meeting, or is there something pressing that we need to to discuss? Well, what are we behind on? I don't think we're behind, I don't think we're behind on anything at this point. So, Mr. I want to meet, what are we meeting on? <laughs> <laughs> um, Possibly we'll have some policies coming forward, um, <coughs> and hmm. we might or might not have some turnover that we might want to conclude any loose ends before that happens. Maybe we won't have any turnover. That's a, actually a good idea that we <coughs> take care. There's a ton of policies that we haven't. What do you think? Would you, ha would you well, need a whole really meeting just to go through policies? Well, it could be a short meeting. Um, so. No, I don't think so. Okay. No, I, we will. There will be toward the end of the year. So our objective is we're. But it might, out. yeah, it might happen with a new policy committee, with a new, um, you know, things are fairly organized to be on track for the end of the school year. Um, Which not we're not even meeting to the thirteenth. So. Six. No, we don't. Of no, May? Policy. Policies, oh. we, we oh. did schedule a meeting for the 30th today. Which that business will be on April 6th, so we won't even have anything so, until what? Yeah, so and then again, we're meeting on the 13th after that. I'm looking at the calendar here. I Yeah, I don't think um, it, policy is going to warrant having having another meeting. So again, yeah, if the there's a the reason to have a meeting, plates. we could have a meeting, but I don't I'm see. Sorry, that, those big boilerplates, not in <coughs> that would It be wouldn't happen then, yeah. no. All right, so I don't think that we need, I mean, if there was a reason to do it, let's do it, but okay. could create. And, you know, on the 6th, we could, you know, decide. The, the oh, my we God, we need another meeting. Yeah. Yes. Fair enough. All right. And can I just go back a little bit? School choice. Um, we're not, there is no school choice this year? We have to vote we have to every vote year vote by June okay. 1st. So yeah, I thought we, we have to have that vote done, but that's what the policy says. So I right. think we have a recommendation coming forward next mm -hmm. Next time. Oh, because I thought that our deadline for the lottery was, what, May 1st or something? That's for the administration to let us know if we were going to move forward with school choice, the number of slots. I read that one. Okay. So, I think we're, I think we're on the right track, but you've You are right. We have always done the lottery early, only because we knew we were having school choice and it was everybody's desire to have it earlier because some people have to have deposits in the private schools. Oh my gosh. So we always did have a lottery earlier, but that's not state. The state is June 1st for the vote. All right. That's it. Any more? Okay. I need a motion to adjourn then. Motion to adjourn. I move we. Second. Neil seconded Second. apparently. All those in favor? Is there a record? Then are you in favor? Thank you. It's unanimous. Thank you. Oh my God.